us here today for our virtual community meeting. Um, just a reminder, this presentation is being recorded. And we're so pleased to speak this evening about the City of El Monte's Streetscape Beautification Master Plan. Um, this is our first community event. And our main purpose today is to share information about the project, what are we trying to accomplish, um, and to get feedback so that uh, community input can really guide this process. So here is an overview of what we'll be covering today. First, um, as I mentioned, we're going to address the project. Um, what is it, what's it going to achieve, and what are the goals that will guide the process? We're also going to share our progress so far to date. So that includes um, looking at the city of El Monte, what are its streets like today? Um, and we'll also cover uh, community engagement and our survey, which is um, what we are using as one of our key tools to find out from community members what you want to see in your city um, and on its streets. And we'll also touch on opportunities to stay involved in the future. So I want to start out with introductions. Um, I am joined by a fabulous team of people who will be turning their videos on here momentarily. My name is Lydia Kenselar, and I am a landscape architect with Alta Planning and Design. And we are delighted to be working with the city of El Monte. Um, we have Lysosa Ortiz, who is with the city, and as well as Melissa Aguilar. And they are our main points of contact. Um, to make sure that we're coordinating with a wide variety of city departments on a project like this that deals uh, with so many different aspects um, from trees and planting to um, bike facilities and uh, pedestrian improvements. Um, my fellow consultants on the call today are Marlene Salazar and Shashen Fan, and they are behind the scenes. They're going to be um, answering questions as they come in through the Q&A chat box. Um, and I'll ask Marlene and Jiaoshan to each introduce themselves. Uh, both are bilingual, Mar Marlene in Spanish and Jiaoshan in Chinese. Um, Marlene, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Marlene Salazar. And as Lydia mentioned, I work with Alpha Planning and Design. And I'll be helping with any questions that you might have about the project. Okay, and hello everyone. My name is Xiao Jian, and I'm a landscape designer with Design Workshop. Uh, during this presentation, I can provide Chinese translation service to uh, everybody if you need the service. Uh, uh, well, I'm really appreciate the opportunity to work with Alta and the city of Al Monte on this exciting project. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. Um, and then a quick uh, Zoom how-to. You've done the first step, which is to join this meeting today. And uh, a key way for you to interact with us, since this is a webinar format, will be to use the Q&A section um, on the Zoom chat. So if you have any questions that pop up through the course of the meeting, just type your question in there, and that will be um, answered. And um, by the, the fine folks who are behind the scenes. All right. So diving into the project, um, this is a streetscape beautification master plan is, is the title of this, but what does that really mean? Um, it's about creating a set of design standards and those are going to allow for a wide variety of different things, but the, the key components are the city wants to have consistency in its street design, um, wants to provide opportunity to reflect place and context. These aren't just streets in any community, these are streets in this community. So what does that mean? Um, and part of being a beautiful street is something that's easy to maintain and that's going to create a safe and welcoming environment for people using all modes of transportation and that's also going to help um, advance the city's green and sustainable goals. So I mentioned that this project is establishing guidelines for design. 
And those guidelines are tools that city staff and departments, as well as developers, can use to guide the design of sidewalks and streetscapes. And it also positions the city to seek funding to actually build those improvements. Um, what this plan does not do is actually create a new construction project. That's something that comes after this plan is in place. So something that you won't see associated with this is a new uh, tree planting or um, other project that happens on your street. This is just the framework that allows for things like that to happen in the future in a more cohesive way. So I've used the term streetscape a lot so far in this presentation, but what exactly does that mean? Um, the streetscape refers to anything that is within the public right of way, and that means uh, starting at the face of the building out into the sidewalk and into the roadway itself. And that's um, what's within the city's control. And it includes things like what the sidewalk and the roadway is made of, um, what types of trees are planted, what kind of lighting is used, what types of benches, bike racks, and the signage system that is throughout the city and helps people get to those key destinations. So, when we're developing guidelines for a city's streets, uh, we want to consider what's happening out there today already. So what we've done so far is to complete an existing conditions assessment of the city that have looked at things like environmental comfort. Um, when we're talking about sidewalks and streetscapes, what that really means is um, how comfortable do people feel walking around, um, is there enough shade, how is the lighting, things like that. So uh, one of the big takeaways for us was thinking about shade and comfort. Um, this is a map where you can see all of the trees that are within the city's control within the public right of way. And 93% of the streets within the city um, they either have trees that don't provide a lot of shade, like palm trees, or there are gaps in that tree canopy. Um, there are many, many trees that are on private property, but this just represents what's controlled by the city. And this is um, a big driver of how comfortable people feel walking and biking. When you have that shade and protection from the elements, it can make those uh, mode choices feel a lot safer and more comfortable. We also looked at things like roadway safety. Uh, this map over here shows collisions that involve people walking and biking. And you can see there are hot spots along uh, some of the major streets within the city, like Romana Boulevard, Garvey, and Valley Mall. Um, and this is a photo from Ramona Boulevard of someone who's trying to cross this very wide street. So something that we noticed is there are a lot of these very wide streets with few crossing opportunities. So how can this project uh, identify better policies to guide placement of crosswalks and the design of those crosswalks so that it creates a safer walking environment? We also looked at things like the existing materials that are throughout the community. Um, you can see, I'm sure folks on the call recognize the transit shelters that are throughout the city that have a really unique character um, and are a pretty consistent element throughout El Monte and it provides um, shade as well as visual interest with some of these decorative details. Um, we also looked at the types of plant material that are around um, this is a photo from Main Street of some of the unique planting details that are there and how that may inform and influence the character of the different areas within the city. And we also looked at um, some of the other materials like striping. Uh, you can see the difference between these two photos and the types of crosswalks that are um, around this is uh, maybe a higher quality and more visible type of crosswalk versus just the standard ladder.
that's a little harder for drivers to see. So how can we uh, come up with strategies to make some of these design choices more uniform across the city, both for aesthetic and safety purposes? So one part of this project that is, is still ongoing right now is our online survey. Uh, this is a screenshot of uh, the survey tool and um, we have a number of questions on there and this is an example of one of them. Uh, if you would launch the Zoom poll now, our IT team, this is um, something we'd love to get your feedback on today. We're thinking about the title of this project. What does a beautiful street mean to you? Um, that's such a fun word, beautiful, that I think is really uh, uncommon to see in a lot of city documents. So let's think about um, what these types of things mean and how that can be reflected in the design choices that we make for this project. Um, so I will give just another couple of moments for folks to select their choices. Great. Um, I think we're going to give another few seconds for people to answer. This is a multiple choice, so you can select a couple different options if you'd like. All right. And we are going to close the poll. All right. So it looks like we've got um, a really wide number of responses. Some of the top things people voted for here were well-maintained sidewalks, space for walking and biking, nighttime lighting, um, signage, and public art. Those were some of the big ones. Thanks so much for your responses. All right, so when we think about what does a beautiful street mean, there isn't a one size fits all recipe. Um, it's very dependent upon the context. So our approach to this project is to identify the different contexts within the city and develop guidelines that are specific to those contexts. So I'm going to go through the different contexts that we've identified. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to ask folks, are these all the right ones? Are there other things we should be thinking about? So the first one here are commercial areas. Uh, these are major streets like Valley Boulevard, um, Garvey, and others that have um, retail, dining, and other commercial business opportunities. So these are some of the wider, um, heavier traffic streets in the city. Some of the things we're thinking about there are safer crossings, um, is there outdoor dining space? That's so critical, especially right now. Um, how is the lighting? Is it something that's really oriented towards uh, automobiles or does it also work really well for people who are using the sidewalk? Um, and how might we use different material choices to emphasize uh, important intersections or destinations or just create visual interest? We're also thinking about streets with bus service. Um, what are the unique needs of transit users? Um, what do people want to see at the bus stops and transit stops that aren't there already? Maybe things like real-time arrival information, Wi-Fi hotspots, USB hubs. Again, crossing is so critical. And thinking about how um, transit plays a role with other non-vehicular modes of transportation. So if you are getting off the bus with your bike, is there a place um, for you to lock up your bike if you want to um, uh, go to some of the shops that are nearby? And how is the lighting working at the transit stop as well as on the streets to get you there? We're also thinking about streets that have a stronger focus for bicycles. Um, the degree to which someone feels comfortable walking and biking, um, and particularly biking, is really driven a lot by that separation from traffic and the speed of that traffic. So 
Um, are there opportunities to create more buffers um, to create those safe spaces? And how can there be amenities specific to biking, like bike racks or fix-it stations, wayfinding to help you get to destinations? And then schools and parks, uh, you know, in your neighborhood, what are the things that you wanna see on these sorts of slower streets? Um, is it about creating safer crossings? Again, that kind of separation between vehicles um, or opportunities to incorporate artwork. Um, this photo on the bottom is an example that kind of combines a lot of those different things. Uh, we have a school crossing that's right over here. And this is a creative crosswalk that kind of draws the eye, encourages drivers to move more slowly. And it's combined with um, a raised intersection where uh, the sidewalk and the roadway are at the same level. So if you are uh, walking down the sidewalk, it makes it much easier to cross and uh, this kind of acts as a speed bump for the intersection. We're also thinking about residential streets. We know that parking is a really huge issue in the city. We wanna preserve that on-street parking where it's needed in those high residential areas. Um, and also think about how we can uh, discourage any driving behavior that we might not like if there are streets that are being used as cut through traffic or maybe streets that are a little bit too wide that could use some additional planting and kind of narrow the street slightly to encourage drivers to go at um, a speed that's in keeping with the speed limit. And also thinking about um, those crossing opportunities again throughout all these typologies. And then last but not least, um, there are alleys all throughout the city. And most people think about alleys as really utilitarian elements, um, things that are used by trash trucks and recycling trucks, things like that. But these can also be really great ways to connect the pedestrian network. So thinking about opportunities to integrate um, landscape, do some greening, um, art opportunities, and that can really work well, um, especially around the commercial areas and uh, drawing people through this kind of secondary tertiary network of streets. So now we're ready to launch our second Zoom poll question. Um, I've just gone through the different areas that we are thinking about the design guidelines that need to respond to these different contexts. So um, we're going to launch the Zoom poll in just a moment. And uh, this one's just really simple. Are these all of the street types that you think exist within the city? Or do you think there are other street types that we missed? Um, and if there are other street types that we missed, if you could write those in the Q&A window, um, then we can bring some of those up. So I'll give just a moment here for people to think on that one. And again, those are commercial areas, streets with bus service, streets with um, existing or planned bike facilities, those near parks and schools, residential streets, or alleys. All right, and we'll wrap it up in just a few seconds. Okay, I think we're ready to close the poll. All right, it looks like that was unanimous. Everyone feels like these are all the right categories. That's great feedback to get. Thank you so much for the responses. Okay. So um, as we wrap things up here, we want to make sure that you um, are aware of the ways that you can stay involved in this project. So if you haven't already, um, you can take the survey for this project that is going to be at um, the city's website. And if you RSVP to this um, webinar, then we'll be sending a follow-up email to you tomorrow that make sure you have, have the link to that. And once we uh, complete that survey over the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to take all the feedback that we got from the survey, take the feedback that we're getting from you today at the workshop, 
and uh, we're going to use that to start developing those guidelines to say what are the things that we do want to see in the city streets. Um, so after we go through that design process, then we'll have um, a second community meeting where we bring those draft comments or draft concepts uh, back to the community, back to you to say, here are the different ways that uh, community feedback informed the design, and these are what we're thinking. Did we get it right? Does this feel like the right direction to you? Um, we want to make sure that this celebrates the community. And as I said at the beginning, these are not just streets in any community, these are streets in your community. So how do we make sure that the design choices we make reflect that? So that second meeting is going to happen sometimes towards the end of the fall, beginning of the winter season. Um, and then this plan will ultimately become part of the city's um, toolkit of planning guidelines. And um, that will be used to guide um, investments in the city in terms of uh, uniform treatments to the streets whenever projects come up that are either uh, led by the city or if there's development on private lots, um, then the streetscape can be uniform regardless of who's completing that work. All right, and that concludes our presentation today. Um, we have time for some Q&A. If you do have any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box and I'll give just a moment to see if any questions come in. I'm not really seeing any at the moment, but we'll give everyone just a second to type anything in. seeing any questions come in. Let's give, uh, looks like, oh, okay. Let's see, we have a question from Edward. How are you planning to do outreach for this project? Tabling, canvassing? Great question, Edward. Um, we are, you know, of course, still in a pandemic. And uh, so we are using socially distanced ways that are maybe a little bit different from um, how we would traditionally do community outreach for a project. Um, but we are exploring things like, are there existing community events like the farmer's market or upcoming ribbon cutting ceremonies uh, where we can encourage survey participation in a socially distanced way um, and also sharing flyers um, at those sorts of community events. We also are sharing information via social media and uh, through the city's website, uh, working with uh, organizations throughout the city, like uh, the Downtown Almonte Business Association and the schools to see if there are existing platforms that can be used to encourage participation in surveys and events. Anyone else have a question? Okay. Well, I'm not seeing anything else come in at the moment, but if you are, uh, something comes to you later, um, we will have an email address that is up as a project website that includes an, a, um, uh, pardon me, an email address where you can send any questions and we will follow up with everyone uh, who attended this meeting just to share that website out again. And thank you so much for attending this evening. We are so excited to be working on this project and can't wait to share back with you where things go after we begin some of our design work. Thanks everyone. <laughs>